On this video we're taking a look at our MLB best bets for the games that are happening on Wednesday, April 27, 2022. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Five plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. St. Louis Cardinals vs New York Mets. St. Louis Cardinals win. And here is why. 35-year-old righty Carlos Carrasco, 101.47 ERA, is looking to have a bounce-back season for the Mets. Through 18-plus innings, Carrasco has allowed just 9 hits and retired 20 batters by strikes. The St. Louis Cardinals are looking to snap a three-game losing streak and are tied with Milwaukee in the loss column for first place in the NL Central Division standings. During Tuesday's home loss, St. Louis was limited to three hits and left eight men on base. Jordan Hicks, 1-2, gave up two runs in the first two innings and took the loss for the Cardinals, who fell to 9-7 on the year. 30-year-old left-hander Steven Matz, 215.27 ERA, will be on the hill for the Cardinals to face his former team. Last time out, Matz allowed one run in five innings during a 4-2 road victory against Cincinnati. I'm going to try the Cardinals for the finale. Matz has done pretty well over his last two outings. In that time he's 2-0 with 10.2 innings, 10 hits, 1 earned and 2 walks. He should be okay here as well. In the Tuesday game, St. Louis couldn't really get much going on offense, but the team did have some nice performances out of the bullpen. If the Cardinals can get the bats to wake up I think they've got a decent shot here. Arizona Diamondbacks vs Los Angeles Dodgers. Los Angeles Dodgers win. And here is why. The Los Angeles Dodgers have scored 17 runs in their last three games and four or more runs in six of their last nine games. The Dodgers have won 10 straight games when scoring four or more runs. Freddie Freeman leads the Dodgers with 22 hits and 9 RBI, while Tree Turner and Chris Taylor have combined for 35 hits and 23 RBI. Julio Urias gets the ball, and he is 1-1 with a 3.00 ERA and 11 strikeouts this season. Urias is 7-1 with a 1.55 ERA and 38 strikeouts in his career against the Diamondbacks. 25-year-old Southpaw Julio Urias, 113.00 ERA, will take the mound for the Dodgers in this matchup. Los Angeles has won Urias' last two starts, and he has allowed just one run over his last 10 innings of work. The Arizona Diamondbacks have dropped seven of their first 11 home games and are sitting in last place. During Tuesday's home victory, Arizona of David Peralta broke an eighth-inning tie with a two-run blast that scored Cooper Hummel. RP Mark Melanchon closed the door with a perfect ninth inning to notch his third save for the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks will counter with talented right-handers at Golan, 001.00 ERA, on Wednesday. Through nine innings of work to start the season, Golan has given up just one run and fanned nine batters. You can make a case for the Diamondbacks given how Golan has looked through two starts. However, Urias has absolutely owned the Diamondbacks throughout his career, and that includes a .140 allowed batting average with 22 strikeouts and 86 at-bats against current Arizona hitters. The Dodgers also rarely string together bad performances. Give me the Dodgers for the bounce-back victory. Pittsburgh Pirates vs Milwaukee Brewers. Over 7.5 runs. And here is why. The Milwaukee Brewers will look to build on their 12-8 win over the Pirates from Tuesday's series opener. Willie Adames has team highs of 4 home runs, 12 RBIs and 16 hits with 3 doubles while Andrew McCutcheon, Christian Yellick and Hunter Renfro each have 4 doubles with McCutcheon logging 15 hits. Aaron Ashby will start here and is 0-2 with a 3.180 RA and 13 strikeouts this season. 23-year-old Southpaw Aaron Ashby, 0-2-3.180 RA, will make his 6th career major league start for the Brewers. Control has been an issue for Ashby, who has walked eight batters across 11-plus frames this season. The Pittsburgh Pirates are a game above .500 at home and are currently 2.5 games off the pace in the NL Central Division race. During last night's home loss, Pittsburgh went 2-4-14 with runners in scoring position and left 10 men on base. 3B Kebrian Hayes collected three hits and scored twice for the Pirates, who fell to 8-9 on the season. The Pirates will turn to 24-year-old righty Bryce Wilson, 006.35 ERA, in this matchup. Pittsburgh has won each of Wilson's first three starts, and he has more walks, 8, than strikeouts, 6. 
I get the case to be made for either side in this one, as I'm not overly fond of the pitching matchup between Aaron Ashby and Bryce Wilson. That being said, I still like the over regardless, because we saw these two offenses explode on Tuesday, and that was with a better pitching matchup than what we had here with Woodruff and Keller on Tuesday and Ashby versus Wilson here. I'm not sure we see 12-8 again, but I think this has potential to hit double digits as well, so give me the over here. Tampa Bay Rays vs Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners win. And here is why. The Seattle Mariners have scored 26 runs in their last three games and four or more runs in eight straight games. The Mariners have won nine of their last 10 games when scoring four or more runs. Ty France leads the Mariners with 25 hits and 21 RBI, while JP Crawford and Adam Frazier have combined for 38 hits and 18 RBI. Marco Gonzalez gets the ball, and he is 1-1 with a 3.29 ERA and 13 strikeouts this season. Gonzalez is 3-0 with a 2.84 ERA and 29 strikeouts in his career against the Rays. Ty France is batting .375 to lead Seattle, and the third baseman has team highs in home runs with 5, RBIs with 19 and hits with 24. Shortstop J.P. Crawford is the leader in on-base percentage at .471. On Wednesday, the Seattle Mariners will send Marco Gonzalez to the mound. The left-hander is 1-1 with a 3.29 ERA, 13 KS and 3 BPs. Tampa Bay was off Monday and the Rays improved to 9-7 with a 5-2 victory over the Boston Red Sox on Sunday. Shane McClanahan was the winning pitcher for Tampa Bay and became the first starting pitcher for the Rays to earn a victory through 16 games. Tampa Bay defeated Boston in two of three games. Tampa Bay is third in the American League East, won one half games behind the first place Toronto Blue Jays. Wander Franco is batting .349 and the Tampa Bay shortstop has a team high 22 hits. Second baseman Brandon Norway is the leader in home runs 3, while first baseman Jai Man Choi is the leader in RBIs with 10 and infielder Yandy Diaz is the leader in on-base percentage at .412. On Wednesday, Tampa Bay will send Drew Rasmussen to the mound. The right-hander is 0-1 with a 5.25 ERA, 9 KS and 3 BPs. The Tampa Bay Rays are going to get the benefit of the doubt more times than not at home, but I'm not leaving plus money on the table with the Mariners. I've mentioned many times that the Seattle Mariners are a team to keep an eye on and they're on fire offensively and starting to pile up the wins. Until they show signs of coming back to earth, I'm going to keep backing the Mariners, especially with these favorable prices. Cincinnati Reds vs San Diego Padres. San Diego Padres win. And here is why. San Diego played the Dodgers over the weekend, winning one of three games. In the Tuesday opener versus the Reds, the Padres scored eight runs in the fourth inning on the way to a 9-6 win. Joe Musgrove put up 6.0 innings with seven this and two earned in the start. Xander Bogert's batting .344 to lead Boston, and the shortstop has team highs in hits with 22 and on-base percentage at .364. Left fielder Alex Verdugo has a team-high three home runs and 12 RBIs. On Wednesday, the Boston Red Sox will send Michael Wacha to the mound. The right-hander is 1-0 with a 1.88 ERA, 12 KS and 7 BBs. Toronto is off to a strong start after defeating Boston on Monday. The Blue Jays are 11-6 and have won five of the last six. Bo Bichette hit a grand slam, the first of his career, in the eighth inning to break a tie and help lead the Blue Jays to the victory. Toronto is first in the Al East, leading the New York Yankees by a half game. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is batting .344 to lead Toronto, and the first baseman has team highs in home runs with 5, RBIs with 12, hits with 21, and on base percentage at .400. On Wednesday, the Toronto Blue Jays will send Ross Stripling to the mound. The right-hander is 0-0 with a 4.50 ERA, 5 KS and 4 BBs. I'm going to take a stab on the Padres. Gore has had a couple of solid starts so far. He's coming off 5.0 clean innings with four hits and two walks versus the Reds in his last outing. Gutierrez played the Padres in his last start as well, posting 4.2 innings and three earned in a loss. On Tuesday San Diego did just about all of their damage in the fourth inning and only notched one hit in the final four frames. I like the Padres to keep it up on the scoreboard here. Chicago White Sox vs Kansas City Royals. Chicago White Sox win. And here is why. Kansas City played the Mariners over the weekend but didn't have any luck in a three-game sweep. On Tuesday versus the Sox, KC posted four runs in the sixth inning on the way to a 6-0 victory. Daniel Lynch finished on 6.0 clean innings with two hits, two walks and two KS. 
Andrew Benintendi is batting .388 to lead Kansas City, and the left fielder has team highs in hits with 19 and on base percentage of .434. Catcher Salvador Perez is the leader in home runs with 5 and RBIs with 8. On Wednesday, the Kansas City Royals will send Zach Greinke to the mound. The right-hander is 0-1 with an 2.25 ERA, 2 KS and 3 BBs. Chicago was off on Monday and the White Sox lost their seventh straight on Sunday when falling to the Minnesota Twins 6-4. Chicago has fallen to third place in the American League Central 1-1 half games behind the first place Twins. Chicago is struggling at the plate as the White Sox are batting just .214 as a team and are 26th in runs scored with 50. Shortstop Tim Anderson is batting .312 to lead Chicago and has team highs in hits with 15 and on base percentage of .327. Designated hitter Andrew Vaughn has three home runs and eight RBIs to lead Chicago in both. On Wednesday, Chicago will send Dylan Cease to the mound. The right-hander is 2-1 with a 3.380 RA, 19 KS and 8 BBs. I'm going to stay with the Sox. Cease needs a good bounce-back game here, though. In his first two starts he put up a 2-0 record with two earned in 10.2 innings. Cease's last outing was a loss to Cleveland with 5.1 innings and four earned on eight hits and two walks. On Tuesday, Chicago had some difficulty. The Sox couldn't cash in offensively and had a couple of breakdowns pitching-wise. That said, I think Chicago will bounce back in Game 2. Atlanta Braves vs Chicago Cubs. Atlanta Braves minus 1.5 goals. And here is why. The Chicago Cubs have scored 25 runs in their last five games and three or fewer runs in five of their last six games. The Cubs have lost six straight games when scoring three or fewer runs. Ian Happ leads the Cubs with 17 hits and 10 RBI, while Nico Horner and C. Suzuki have combined for 34 hits and 21 RBI. Mark Leader Jr. gets the ball, and he is 0-1 with 11.05 ERA and seven strikeouts this season. This will be Leader's second career game against the Braves. Mark Leader Jr. will make his third start on the hill for the Chicago Cubs. Leader is 0-1 on the season with 7.1 innings pitched. Leader has seven strikeouts and carries 11.05 ERA. The Atlanta Braves went into this series with the Cubs on Tuesday riding a two-game losing streak. Atlanta is 7-10 on the season and sit third in the NL East. The Braves have won four of their last 10 games and lost to Miami 5-4 on Sunday. Atlanta currently has the third most strikeouts in the MLB. Charlie Morton will make his fourth start on the hill for the Braves. Morton is 1-2 sit 15.2 innings pitched. Morton has 14 strikeouts, 7 walks, and carries a 6.32 ERA. Leader Jr. isn't off to the best start this season, and he hasn't had a great career up to this point, if we're being honest. You can say Morton has had his struggles as well, but he's shown us enough in the past where we can assume he's going to get back on track sooner than Alter. The Chicago Cubs are just a mess right now, and Leader isn't a pitcher you're confident who can turn things around. Give me the Braves, and I'll take the RL to shave down the price. Minnesota Twins vs Detroit Tigers. Under 7.5 goals. And here is why. The Detroit Tigers will look to snap a three-game losing skid after a 5-4 loss to the Twins on Wednesday. Austin Meadows has 16 hits as well as 9 RBIs, while Spencer Torkelson has a team-high 3 home runs and 8 RBIs so far this season. Jamer Candelario has a team-high 3 doubles, while Miguel Cabrera has 15 hits with a pair of doubles, as well as a .294 batting average on the year. Michael Pineda will get the start in this one for Detroit and is 1-0 with a 0.00 ERA and two strikeouts this season. The Detroit Tigers are batting at .231 with 53 runs 112 bits and 7 home runs. Batting leaders for the Tigers are Spencer Torkelson with a .217 BA8 RBIs and 3 home runs and Austin Meadows with 9 runs batted in and 0 home runs and .333 batting average. The Tigers are pitching 3.22 ERA and a 1.14 whip and 106 strikeouts. Starting pitcher for the Tigers is Mitchell Pineda 1-0, with a 0, .0 ERA.60 whip with two strikeouts and zero home runs through five innings pitched. The Twins are batting at .217 with 58 runs, 111 hits and 16 home runs. Batting leaders for the Twins are Byron Buxton with a .260 average with four RBIs and three home runs, and Gary Snatches with a .242 BA with eight RBIs and one home run. The Twins are pitching 3.380 RA and a 1.20 whip and 134 strikeouts. Starting pitcher for the Twins will be Joe Ryan, 1-1, with a 2.70 ERA, 1.10 whip, and 11 strikeouts, allowing 7 hits and 1 home run. I get the case to be made for either side in this one, but I'm looking at the under. 
Joe Ryan's been outstanding in his run for the Twins early on this season, and while I'm not a fan of Michael Pineda, he's pitched well early on this season, and I'm not overly fond of the lack of consistency in either of these batting lineups. I think this has the potential to be a bit of a pitcher's duel, so give me the under. Texas Rangers vs Houston Astros. Houston Astros win. And here is why. Houston had a brief 2-1 lead later in the Monday game, but ultimately coughed up five more runs in a 6-2 loss. On Tuesday, the Astros posted three runs in the fourth inning during a 5-1 victory. Jake Odorizzi finished with 6.0 innings, one earned, one walk and one hit. The Houston Astros are pitching a 1.69 ERA, a 1.14 whip with 52 strikeouts. Starting pitcher for the Astros is right-hander Christian Javier00, with a 0.0 ERA, .72 whip with 12 strikeouts, allowing 5 hits and 0 home run through 8.1 innings pitched. The Astros are batting at a .218 average for 45 hits and 24 runs and 9 home runs. Batting leaders for the Astros is Alex Brigman with a .333 average for 7 RBIs and 2 home runs. The Texas Rangers are batting at .240 with 49 runs, 75 hits and 10 home runs. Batting leaders for the Rangers are Corey Seager and Brad Miller, both with five runs batted in, and two home runs and .455 batting average, and Eli Hernandez batting at 100%, the Rangers are pitching 6.19 ERA and a 1.57 whip and 88 strikeouts. Starting pitcher for the Rangers has been listed as Glenn Otto with a 1.80 ERA.6 whip, with five strikeouts through five innings pitched. I'm probably going to stay with Houston. This should be pretty interesting pitching battle, though, neither one of these guys has been in a ton of innings yet this year, but the early returns have been great. In the Tuesday game, Houston got some really solid pitching performances in addition to the big fourth inning. I think the Astros will keep it going with another victory here. Los Angeles Angels vs Cleveland Guardians. Los Angeles Angels win. And here is why. The Cleveland Guardians have scored three runs in their last three games and three or fewer runs in five of their last seven games. The Guardians are 1-9 this season, when scoring three or fewer runs. Jose Ramirez leads the Guardians with 21 hits and 20 RBI, while Miles Straw and Stephen Kwan have combined for 31 hits and 9 RBI. Zach Plesak gets the ball, and he is 1-1 with a 1.53 ERA and 10 strikeouts this season. Plesak is 2-0 with a 2.81 ERA and 9 strikeouts in his career against the Angels. This year the Cleveland offense has been able to get a total of 75 runs scored and are hitting decent at a clip of .256 with a .321 OBP. The problem stems from the pitching with a 3.61 ERA and allowing the opponents to hit at a clip of .223. The Angels are coming here after beating the Indians in the opening game of the series. The second game the Angels were easily winning prior to this publication. The Angels are sitting in second in the Owl West with a 10-7 record on the year. This year the Angels have scored a total of 82 runs on the year and are hitting at a clip of .247 with an OBP of .332. Pitching for the Angels has the team sitting on a 3.93 ERA and have allowed the opponents to hit at a clip of only .205 so far. The Cleveland Guardians can't get out of their own way right now and a lot of it has to do with an offense that can't string together runs. I doubt things are going to change much when facing Shohei Itani, who has been flawless in two of his three starts this season and has 26 strikeouts in 14.1 innings. The Angels' offense is also showing signs of life. I have to lay the juice with the Angels at home with their ace on the hill. San Francisco Giants vs Oakland Athletics. San Francisco minus 1.5 goals, and here is why. The Oakland A's will look to bounce back from a 8-2 loss at the hands of the Giants in their last matchup on Tuesday. Sheldon Noose has a team-high 17 hits with a .327 batting average, while Sean Murphy has 16 hits with a team-high 7 doubles and 3 home runs with 11 RBIs. Seth Brown's got a team-high 13 RBIs with 4 doubles as well this season. Paul Blackburn will be tabbed with a start in this one and is 2-0 with a 1.80 ERA and 14 strikeouts this season. Run production for Oakland has been decent with a total of 69 runs scored. The Oakland team has hit at a clip of .209 with a .278 OBP. The pitching for Oakland is sitting at an ERA of 3.31 on the year and have allowed the opponents to hit at a clip of .232. The Giants are coming in with a very nice 12-5 record on the year. The last game on the field for T-Giants prior to Oakland was a win. The win was a single game against the Brewers and had a final score of 4-2. 
When it comes to scoring the Giants have put a total of 83 runners across the plate. The Giants are hitting at a clip of .238 with an OBP of .312. The pitching for San Francisco has been amazing with a 2.42 ERA and a .222 batting against average. I get the case to be made for an underdog in certain spots, and the A's will be the dogs here given their issues as of late against a solid San Francisco team. However, while Paul Blackburn hasn't been terrible as of late, the A's offense, or lack thereof, has been pretty bad to be honest over the last week and I don't see this changing regardless of who gets the call for the Giants. I'll side with the Giants minus 1.5 here. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.